You don't have toothpicks in your eyes. I don't. A little, little adrenaline rush is going on. You know, I've been up since yesterday at 6 a.m., so I think it's 24 or 28 hours and uh, still going. So it, it, last minute rush was fun up there. Uh, lots of things happening. Lots of, you know, towards the end, there, a lot of action happens. So it's fun to fun to see all that all takes place uh, in a personal view that you've never seen before. Yeah, so. but why couldn't that action take place before your official uh, deadline? You know, uh, we we set our deadlines earlier, so we went through all our budget bills early to get those deadlines in, but. It, it just seems to always come down to the end. I think the more uh, more time shortage there is, they think the more power they have or something. But it, yeah. it, it just seems to go back and forth. And we wanted to start, get done early. Obviously, we didn't want a special session. Um, but we, we got a lot of things done. I think we did some great accomplishments. So hopefully the people out there, you know, in a couple months from now, will forget about we had a special session and, and really realize what we did get done. And it, it comes down, you know, when you have a Democrat House and a Democrat Senate, or I'm sorry, Republican House and Republican Senate and, and a, a Democrat a governor, it, there's a lot of uh, things going on there to see how we can get trade-offs and things done. And so it, it makes it interesting. But I think... Well, and you don't have a major majority either. Correct. We're, we're in, the Senate's got a majority by one, and yeah. you know they said that was me, but we'll, well, well, that's up go. for debate. But uh, <laughs> it's a tight, and we had you know we had one senator, Senator Carla Nelson from Rochester, whose father passed away uh, during the session. Actually, she was sitting with the governor at the governor's table, going to talk about K, uh, uh, the K-12 uh, bi bi uh, bill, and got a call right in the meeting that her father had passed away. So. Some crazy things happened this session. Uh, we had other people that had to leave right after session, so we had two out uh, through last night. One had to fly off for a business trip that he could not. He postponed twice and couldn't postpone a, a third time, and another one that had a business trip somewhere else that they couldn't postpone. Uh, so it, it gets tough when you only have that many people up there and only a one-seat majority in the Senate. So it. it uh, it was interesting. But you adjourned sine die at 3 o'clock this morning. That is correct. And you haven't been to bed yet? I have not. You going right after the show? No, I'm actually going to head down to Wasika and uh, do some stuff down there with the Tink Larson people sure. on the Tink Larson Field. We got some money at the last moment. It was probably one of the Probably, Gordy, it, it, one of the most fun things that happened was to get this $375,000 in for Tink Larson Field. As many of you know, it, it burned down, I believe, last April. They've yep. been fundraising. Their insurance didn't quite cover the, the rebuilding costs, and they were short of about... Uh, 370 or actually 275,000 was kind of their base plan but they're to get a new scoreboard and to get the dugouts uh, there was some something with the dugouts they needed done extra so we funded the full 375 and got that through in the bonding bill last night they had really no idea I think it was two nights before I called a Tim Lunen for that was helping with the process and, and said how much money do you need for that and he said and he was it was 1 30 in the morning and I woke him up and I, I needed to get the numbers to find out what we could do and we we got that money in the bonding bill at the very last minute and uh, I actually got to call Tink Larson this morning at 3 30 said John call me I want to know and uh, called Tink this morning at 3.30 and gave him the good news and, and I, he was uh, he couldn't believe it so it was very fun to go Knowing to Knowing Tink so he probably got a little emotional. He was a little bit emotional yeah. and yes it was it was fun and, and really almost sends a shiver up your spine of how neat that is to be able to do something and, and you're looking at a bonding bill is almost one billion dollars and uh, three hundred seventy five thousand dollars isn't a huge amount in there but that three hundred seventy five thousand dollars that we got for this is probably one of the most funnest things that I've seen of, of those things so it was really fun I uh, actually had another the, the Veterans Memorial we we tried to fund that and, and actually they took the house version of that and only took thirty thousand we needed sixty thousand to finish it and in the legacy bill it was thirty thousand and missed the other thirty uh, so we actually <coughs> put that in the bonding bill as well so that, bonding bill as well. So that was the smallest line item in the bonding bill for $30,000, but we got in there as well. So that fully funded the, the Rice County Veterans Memorial so we can finish that this year. Okay, so you did get the 60. We got 60 just from two different want funds. Oh, One from bonding, we didn't get, and so the, I should say the 30,000, sorry, I've been up a long no, time. I know, the 30,000 that we didn't get in the legacy bill through the veterans, we funded through the bonding bill at the last oh, minute. Uh, two one different the pots. Sure. Two different pots, but we got the full 60,000 so we can get this veterans memorial up and going. So, or it's finished. It's so. Finished the Rice County Veterans Memorial, yes. the North Lawn of the yep. And we also got 50,000 in the Wasika uh, Veterans Memorial as well. So I was the co-author of that bill as well. So we got that one done as well. So yeah. both, both of those veterans memorials got funded. And I believe you told me yesterday you got some funds and bonding for MSAD. Yes, we did some of their uh, capital or their uh, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, asset preservation. I think it's a roof on noise hall, and there's a fifty thousand uh, dollars study for a security corridor and how they want to put a security corridor between two buildings and that. So that got in there as well. There's also the Milltown Trail got in for I believe three hundred and twenty-eight thousand uh, to the north side of Fairwell towards Dundas. It's it's borders a couple different districts between my district and District Twenty. Uh, to get that in there. That got funded as well. So, yeah, we got some good stuff for Fairwell. Mm -hmm. Senator John Jasinski is with us this morning. We certainly appreciate it. I, I mentioned on uh, one of our website Facebook posts or something that I might have to give you some no-dos today. No, I'm doing good. I, the adrenaline rush is still there. So. <laughs> for coming in. I mean, I really appreciate it because I know you're not working on a lot of sleep. No, no. We were trying to go over that. Do you have any idea how many hours you have slept in the last few days? Oh boy, it's not Midnight a lot. Monday, we did get it. one stretch where we got six hours. I think that was a couple days ago, or was it yesterday? Today's Friday, I think. On I think Wednesday night, I got six hours or so. So, <laughs> and then the day before that, we'd gone on one hour of sleep. I was in a, the same suit for forty. I think we figured out forty-one hours. So, yeah, it was a, a rough couple last couple days, but the same suit for forty-one hours. Yep. Never even ended your tie. I think my tie came off once, and yeah, but <laughs> when I went and slept on my couch in my office for an hour, oh my we word. did get a little, you know, here and there you get a little hour cat nap in between, but it's pretty tough to sleep when you're waiting for your phone to ring to get called back down, so and it's, it seemed, I think, from what I've heard from some of the veteran centers, it, it was a little bit more uh, back and forth. We, we'd have to recess for a while, and they'd renegotiate a few things and try and get some global targets, and then we'd come back in. And we'd have to do some more bills, and then we'd have to send it off the house, and then we'd have to wait for them to hear it before it come back to us. So we did a, a lot of recessing in between where you had to be right there and be available, uh, but you you know you weren't doing anything. So it was uh, it was uh, again uh, from what I heard a, a different session than normal. But I think the tone up there, which I said when, a couple weeks ago when I was here, is we really wanted to work together bipartisan, get things done, and show people in Minnesota we can get things done. So and I think we did a really good job. I mean, some of these things, the, the $650 million in tax relief was the largest uh, tax break or tax uh, relief in two decades. Uh, we had a transportation bill of $300 million invested in roads. It was the largest since 2008. Um, so we, we did a lot of big things, which is good. What roads are earmarked around this area? Well, we don't like earmarks, Gordy, or the governor doesn't the like governor earmarks. Doesn't like. So uh, we didn't get, you know, I had Highway 14 in there for 90 million earmark or constituent requests, as we like to call it. Uh, <laughs> and that did, they, you know, governor said that had to be removed for before he would approve that bill. But what we did is another bill that I authored was for quarters of commerce. So we got $350 million put into the quarters of commerce program, which helps uh, highways like Highway 14 get expanded and other highways, Highway 12, Highway 212. There's several other roads throughout the state similar to Highway 14 where they really need to get done that haven't gotten done. Uh, this uh, fund called the Quarters of Commerce actually puts money into funds to uh, get funding for highways to expand lane mileage for more of a, I'd say more of a commerce reason, not so much the traffic counts, not so much the accidents, it's trying to get commerce back and forth. And again, with the Rochester Destination Medical Center, uh, that's very important down there. So getting people in and out of Rochester, and there's a lot of people that live in Faribault and Owatonna and Wasika that li that work in Rochester. So uh, that highway is not safe. So that does come into it as well. Uh, and having a single lane go from single lane to two lane to single lane is very dangerous when you're switching from what you're used to in one segment is not in the next segment. So a uh, very dangerous. There's been a lot of bad deaths there. So really believe we sent our message out to MnDOT that we want to get 14 done and I, I did get to meet with Charlie Zelli and, and voice my concerns on that and I think uh, this is a good statement that will you know get their attention as well as another bill that I authored was uh, actually making it transparent and, and on these road selection pro uh, processes why they do get selected or don't get selected did and you that ask, was in that bill. So. Did you ask Mr. Zelli if they'll finish our south interchange? Gordy, I knew this was coming. No, I didn't ask him about that one. <laughs> I was I was stressing Highway 14. That's no, the I big don't. thing. So. Did you talk about the north? I did not talk to the commissioner on, on or the commissioner on that one. No, my big push was Highway 14. Uh, the the County Road 9 interchange was a bill that went in after the deadline, so that couldn't have been heard this oh, year. Okay. That's for next year. I just wanted to get that in the hopper for next year. I, as I said, when I ran Highway 14 is my number one priority. And I'm going to continue working on that as much as I can do to get that completed or, or at least in pro, uh, pro, pro, uh, 
progress going towards that. And with this money going into the quarters of commerce, I think we'll continue on, and I think they definitely got the message we need to work on Highway 14. So, so the corridors of commerce, educate me on this now, is at the discretion of MnDOT, they get this money to work with. Correct. They get this money, goes into what's called the Corridors of Commerce Program. It's not in the standard transportation funding. It's kind of a separate fund that works towards these roads that need to connect commerce and things like that. They don't fall under the strict uh, guidelines that the regular roads do, so it's, it's more of a a setup for, for people like Highway 14 and these cons constituent requests or earmarks, it's more set up to do it that way. But what we're asking for is, again, more transparency or a, to see how that selection process is done. So does the state legislature, did you guys determine what roads qualify as roads for commerce or does MnDOT do that? MnDOT does that. We're just trying to, to make sure that those standards are are transparent on why they pick those and they give them a ranking and, and things like that. So Okay. So that's going to come down the pike. You're going to learn whether MnDOT thinks that Highway 14 should be a number one priority or number five and or whatever. Correct. And if it's not, why? And what, what reason we need to get it to number one or why it doesn't meet certain criteria to get it to number one? Or if there's not money available in one year, what number we're on the list so when the money does come available, we know where we're at. Because right now we have, you know, really have no idea when it's coming and, and what's holding us back. So we want to be more transparent to understand you know, where those fall in the hopper, as you would say. So is the goal here to have 14 two-lane all the way through Minnesota? We would like it, yes. I, I'm obviously working on just on my right, section, no, but I there's understand. there's a, a section. There's it's about 12.6 miles from between Oton and Dodge Center. That's you know single lane as you call or you know not right. not divided. So it's a single lane is what we call or two-way traffic, uh, and we want to go to four lane, which would be you know separated. And there's 12.6 miles there between those two spots, and then as you go out uh, west of Mankato towards New Ulm, there's some stretches out there they want to get done as well. So. I'm obviously focused on the uh, my section that's in District 24, but we also there's a Highway 14 partnership that's been you know working together to try and work together to get those things done. That was and there when Senator Day was there. Yes, correct. That's I think when it started. Yep, you are correct. That's how long ago that partnership was set up, and they yep. still don't still have, have that, that stretch done. I think someone said we work on almost 45 to 50 years on Highway 14 to get that done. So. Again, that's, as I said many times, that's my number one prior to get that done. Uh, we'll continue to work on that. I think it's very important for the district. I, and I think a lot of political campaigns have been uh, surrounded or won or lost over that, that topic because people want to get 14 done. So uh, it continues to be that political topic. So should 60 <laughs> be four lane to Mankato from here? That would be nice if we had a lot of money. But, you know how uh, many kids, uh, there's a lot of kids stay here yep. and they go to school you in Mankato or whatever? Yep. Well, you went there, didn't you? I did. I went to Mankato. I commuted back and forth on Highway 60 for several years. Well, then you know exactly what Absolutely. I'm talking about. Absolutely. Yep. But now you can go down to Otana and head straight, well, straight west and get there if you want to be on the four lane. So, Because it, it is completed now between from Otana to Mankato is right. four lane there. Yep. That just got completed, you know, was it about 10 years ago, I think? Or maybe I do that less. in the winter. Yes. Much more safe, so... That way I get some wiggle room That's in right. the winter. That's right. Senator John Jasinski is with us. So what other farable specific measures did we get? Or do we get any farable specific, North? Well, not specific, but, you know, education, the, the K-12 bill, uh, is it increased our 2%. formula 2% 2%. I know, you know, as I, I think I mentioned last time we were on the show, uh, we had to come up with priorities. We knew the governor wanted to be high. We knew we wanted to come down in taxes, so we started a little lower at one and a half and one and a half on our formula, knowing that we were going to have to negotiate to two and two, which we did get two and two, so that was good. Uh, that brings a lot more money per pupil, which is the big thing they want. So what the governor want, four or five? Uh, no, I think it was two and a half, I think, or something like that. I, I don't recall exactly, but I think it was up in that two and a half. And, and we also had a pension bill that you know a lot of teachers and, and state employees, it was there as well. So we were working on funding that as well. So that's in another bill. Look at that. Um, but the, also the, the CPA or county program aid and LGA, there's uh, in the tax bill, there's money put towards that. So that'll increase Faribault's funding for what we get in LGA. It'll increase Rice counties uh, here locally for what we get. And the same as Waseca County and Steel County in District 24. They're, they're getting more. Too? Everything is going up. So each, all the counties in, in my District 24 and all the, all the cities in my district will be seeing increase in LGA, both LGA and CPA. So that's good. You know what the percentage is? I don't have at the top of my head, Gordy, but 
it's it's up, so that's good. Yeah. Well, we had a governor at one time that, and you know this because you found yes, it. Yes, 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 on a lot. I was very familiar with what an I was on a lot that was. I was at the meeting and uh, talked to him myself personally right after, well, and he said he didn't like LGA. Yeah. And that you know that does go back and forth. And as a mayor, obviously, I understand the importance of it. But I, I the important thing is is really what this LGA is supposed to be doing, or CPA is trying to reduce the tax burden on the individual person, not the city. So. Uh, if we do increase LGA and CPA, that doesn't mean the city should spend more or the county should spend more. It's supposed to be reducing the property taxes that the individuals and the businesses are paying. So we've got to make sure that the cities and counties understand why we're doing it. It's to, to get the property or the property taxes down for the individuals and businesses, not increase spending for counties and cities to add programs and do things like that. So is there going to be some stipulations that won't work? allow them to do that? There are no stipulations. No, it's up to the cities and the counties to be responsible and responsible spending to do that. But if there's some cities that aren't responsible, you're probably going to be forced to put some stipulations. I think at some point you're you probably know, down correct. the road is what yep. I'm saying. Yep. That's probably not a bad idea, but again, you, you try to want to give local control to your right. cities and your counties to, to make that best determination, but we really want to stress that you know, this is trying to relieve the property taxes on the individuals and the, and the businesses, not trying to increase spending in the county or do that so you didn't get a pay increase uh, we did did get a pay increase it starts on July 1st well they were saying today that the bill was authorized well it's constitutionally dedicated so we're gonna have to look back at that but again so unfortunately the way it works is the legislators get paid first and then the staff get paid second so uh, someone now between now and the next uh, budget cycle, we have to get some money put in there because it's constitutionally dedicated that it increases our, our wages as, as legislators, so that will happen. I know the House uh, representatives was trying to push back on that, um, but the Senate, um, most everybody in the Senate agrees that, you know, we're going to let the pay raise go through. So, And what percent was that? Oh, it hasn't been raised in a long, long time, Gordy. So I know I don't know the percentages, but I know it goes from thirty-one thousand three hundred dollars to forty-five thousand dollars. So it is a big increase, but it's been, you know, I think it's I, nineteen ninety since it was changed last. So it's been a long time. So yeah. I think if you look at it over the of the full span, I think it's about a two or a three percent increase per year. But don't quote me on that. You just said it. <laughs> Right here. Well, you got me summer. after 28 hours of no sleep. So no, that's but, okay. You just said it. Yeah, so the, I know the numbers. I know it's 31, three to 45. That's you know, I, and I know it's about 1990 was the last time it was raised. So anything else locally that you wanted to touch on that people uh, might want to be. You know, just I can go through some some rough numbers again. Education, we're going to see 1.3 billion dollars more in education. We're going to see 2.1 billion dollars more spent on health and human services. You're going to see 200 million dollars more spent on higher ed. Again, this is statewide. 170 million dollars more spent on public safety. Um, we're going to see seven million dollars spent more in in agriculture. And we're going to see 300 million of one-time spending for through bonding, and 300 million in uh, funding for transportation. And you're going to see 650 million dollars in tax relief. And Gordy's answering his phone. Uh, shouldn't even be on. To be honest. <laughs> So we are seeing some increases, uh, which is good. Again, especially in education, we believe that's important um, and knew that we were going to come up on our number. Uh, but that is kind of the, the game they play up there of who's going to move from what. And we started our, our tax relief bill high, knowing that the governor wanted, will want that to come down and would give up education to come up for that. So That's what I was going to ask. Specifically, who gets relief in this tax? I mean, you know, the Democrats are saying it's rich people. Oh, there's all kinds of different categories, and I don't have it. There's there's some in the farming. The, the CPA and the LGA comes in. That's part of the tax relief. Um, there's some tax relief for, uh, as I mentioned the, uh, earlier, there's some changes in, in sales tax on food and vending machines is one. There's some tax relief. Um, there's some tax credits for college and things like that. And I don't have all the specifics. I'm sorry, I don't have that sheet in front of me. But there's a over 650 or there's 650 million dollars in tax relief. Didn't I see where your auto parts got through? 
Auto parts, my bill, or I was co-authored that bill, yes. So we got $300 million more in the biennium for spending on transportation. We did that without a tax uh, or a gas, gas tax and without increasing license tabs, which the governor wanted to do. What we did is redirected the auto parts sales. So if you buy a part for your car, the sales tax collected from that goes towards roads and bridges, as well as rental cars and leased vehicle. Uh, all the taxes in those go towards transportation and roads and bridges. Previously, the taxes just went into the general fund. Correct, into the general fund. But if you look at the amount of money that we captured for transportation, it's only about 1.17% of the general fund. So it's a very small number that is actually going to roads and bridges. Because again, you have to go, education is one of the biggest numbers that goes in the general fund and other things. But uh, some people uh, will uh, say that you know, you're taking money away from schools, you're taking money away from health care and those things. But really, it's a very, very small number. Uh, but we do need it, and you know we had a 1.6 or 1.5 billion dollar surplus. So we believe with a surplus, you shouldn't be you know adding taxes and increasing taxes. We think we should give some some of the Minnesota some tax relief. So by doing that, we're not increasing the gas tax, and we're putting that money into roads and bridges, which makes sense. We think so. I mean, you know, auto related items. Auto related items, correct. You bet. Going to transportation yeah. funds. You know, the, the, the and the also the thing is, you know, at some point that should be constitutionally dedicated, how we do that. You know, right now it's constitutionally dedicated for the uh, motor vehicle sales tax, the gas tax, and the, uh, I'm coming up blank here, uh, license tabs. So those are the big ones that are constitutionally dedicated to go towards transportation. And the, uh, Auto parts is not constitutionally dedicated, so that would have to go on the ballot and, and have the voters choose if we want to go towards that. So the Southwest Light Rail get in? You Southwest know? Light Rail, what we did is we basically uh, said that we would not fund the operating expenses for Southwest Light Rail. So uh, right now, currently with the light rail that's in place right now, we as Minnesotans throughout the state uh, fund 50% of the operating costs for those, and we, we continue will we'll continue to do that but we've said no more of that for Southwest Light Rail. So if Southwest Light Rail is built, uh, the operating expenses need to be funded through the seven county or collar counties in the metro. Okay. So that did go through, so we will not be funding uh, Southwest Light Rail uh, with or the operating expenses for that. And I know there were some protests. Oh yeah, the Capitol's been busy with lots of protests. And one of them specifically dealt with the uh, illegal immigrants or the undocumented. That was one of the yes, that term was one you want to use. And that did uh, actually did get uh, passed that uh, would basically uh, outlaw illegal immigrants from having driver's licenses. So that did get passed. A very controversial thing up there over the last you know five months. Uh, a lot of protests. Uh, probably the most noisy protests we've had, and they were very active in the last couple of days thinking that that was going to come in. And, and they actually tried to put an amendment on a lot of bills to enact that uh, on the TFL side. They kept adding an amendment to try and get that in. So. And that's the reason you had the special session is what I heard. Is that true? Well, I don't, I don't know if that's why we had the special session, but there, there was a lots of things that were a lot of negotiated things of, you know, what the governor wanted and didn't want and what, you know, again, when you have a Republican House and Senate and a DFL governor, and you, you know everybody believes in what we want. So there's and, and the governor really believes in some of his things. He you know his education is huge to him. Water you know water quality is huge and, and not that's not important to us. But you, you have to prioritize and we tax uh, tax breaks were some big things. You know we believe that if you give some tax breaks out to businesses, they're going to reinvest in the community and, and that's really what drives your economy. So we believe uh, right now Minnesota is is like the third uh, highest tax state in the nation. Well, again, as I've said before, we don't need to be third. We, we do have a high quality of living here. We have to do with some you know, climate-related road issues and things like that. So we, we have to spend a lot of money on some of the quality of life issues we have, but we don't need to be the top in the top three. If we were no. 10th or 12th or 15th, that would be more acceptable. So we're really trying to get that down to attract businesses to stay here or to relocate here or to invest here and believe that money will fall through the economy you know, all the way through with jobs and, and all those different things that are created. So in the last couple minutes of the show here, this is your first legislative session. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? 
Well, you know, Gordy, I'll be completely honest. Uh, about four days ago, I was I was about ready to, to hang her up. It was a whole different deal. And, you know, I think as being the mayor uh, for eight years, you're kind of in the center of everything that's going on, and you're you're kind of active in everything. And, and you go up there as a freshman senator, and if you're not in leadership, there's a lot of times where you really don't know what's going on, and you get frustrated. You're spending all this time. You're away from your family. Uh, you know, I've taken a huge cut in my you know commissions, what I do as a real estate broker here, to be up there. Uh, and that kind of goes back a little bit to our, our sure. what we're making is you need, you need to be compensated to co to get business people away from their business to go up and spend that time and, and do that you really need to get you know somewhat compensated for it. I don't think forty five thousand is a huge number to take away from your you know to spend away from your business and and I'll be honest I've I've you know given up a lot of commissions to be up there but you know I do it I don't do it for the money I do it to to make Minnesota better. I've always been that way. I wanted to make Faribault better. That's why I spent my time as the mayor, and, and I, that's the exciting part is to try and make Minnesota better. Um, and I even forgot where we're going with this, but you're gonna have to help me. But uh, you you do it to make Minnesota better. You don't do it for the money, and you know we want to see things change. And but the way it's operated up there, it's so inefficient. Yeah, and that and that's where we're going. So so I was frustrated. I was ready, but. You know, you hadn't had sleep for 41 hours, so you get refreshed, you come back, and you think, oh, and then, you know, even this little Tink Larson thing, to, to fund a, a 375000 to make this, this whole town's, you know, yeah. baseball field come back, those are the things that keep bringing you back for more and more. So no matter how frustrated you get, to do something fun like that for a community or a Veterans Memorial or whatever it is, that's what brings you back to keep but doing that. as you noted, in the grand scheme of $46 billion budget, this is a three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar item. item. Mm -hmm. Has made Wasika that town doing cartwheels. Well, you know, I haven't been over there yet, but I've got an guessing, awful lot of calls that they're pretty excited about. I'm it. guessing Tink himself was awfully excited. You know, they that. might throw you a ticker tape parade. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm definitely going to be there for the groundbreaking in the first pitch. So I'll well, tell you, you that. Uh, when is that? Do you know? Uh, it's the uh, groundbreaking is hopefully this this fall, and then I think the first pitch will be next spring. So. Yeah, we'll see if we can't make it over there too. Cause but uh, but it, to get back to a little bit, you know, it was frustrating, but you did come out of it, and and you talk to other centers that are kind of going through the same thing of you know the ups and downs and and a lot of it's you get frustrated after no sleep and you think things aren't getting done and you think you know you're not making any progress so uh, when it all comes to the end and you see what things you've listed out what you've accomplished it brings you back and there's a great group of people up there see here's my take i watching this for however many years I've been here this happens a lot of, especially in recent years special session kind of thing my take on it is leadership is the people who've been there the longest, that does not necessarily mean they're the best leaders. There's no reason why a freshman lawmaker couldn't be a leader. They oh. might be more leadership quality than someone who's been there 30 years. You understand where I'm going with it? Absolutely. And, and, you know, we, 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 the last half an hour, we were waiting for the House to pass the bombing bill, so we kind of got to sit up and tell stories and laugh and all the things. And, and one of the very senior senators said, you know, this freshman class of senators that came in, there was 12 of us, is the most impressive class of, of senators they've ever seen. Uh, so they're excited about it. And again, I kind of sat back my first year to kind of watch how things go, and you don't want to get you know, too out there, but uh, next year will be a whole different thing, and they know us, uh, a freshman senator will have a whole different attitude next year of, of getting more things done once we know how they're actually accomplished. Well, you go home and get to bed. All right, thanks, Gordy. Senator John Jasinski, you're in tune to KDHLAM Farrell.